What's up, YouTube? HPJ here, and I'm coming at you guys with a with my structure deck opening for uh, Order of the Spellcaster. So this is the most recent TCG um, structure deck that we've gotten, and this one is based off of this guy, Endymion, the master of the Master Magician. So if you guys are familiar with Endymion, he was also the cover of a spellcaster deck that focused around spell counters and abusing his effect to take out spells and traps and all the crazy shenanigans. Now he has a pendulum form and his pendulum form is raring to go. So I am raring to go to show you guys the structure deck. Uh, if you're not familiar with spell counters, they're pretty much just little um, iterations that you put on a monster card that says whenever a spell card is activated you put a spell card in your hands or insert card effect here that when insert card here is either a normal summon, social summon, or a spell card is activated you place a counter on it. Then they have other effects that resolve when they have spell counters, remove spell counters, or shift around spell counters. So that is pretty much my gist of spell counters. Now um, there are some famous monsters of course that were reprinted in here actually and then there were some that I missed the one big miss of course is um breaker the magical warrior because he's not in this i'm really surprised he's not but there were a lot of spell cards and stuff that were printed um in the structure deck so a lot of people were very happy about this this is what it looks like when um you open it i've already opened like two of these for obvious unfortunate reasons but yeah this is the um, but this is what the mat looks like. There's Endymion, there's Reflection of Endymion, and there is uh, Daybreaker, the Magical uh, Knight, Warrior, whatever he is, he's there. And then on the back of it, it shows um, combos with Endymion. It shows uh, packs you can get some supply and different cards from. Cybernetic Horizon, Infinity Chasers, Savage Strike, and um, Dark Neo Storm. Ironically enough, Dark Neo Storm because of the fact that, um, oh, hold on one second. Dark Neo Storm is primarily because of the fact that it is the newest set, and I believe it has some spellcaster support in it. Don't quote me on it. I do know for a fact uh, Infinity Chasers has a ton of spellcaster support, and that's literally because of the fact that um, Witchcraft is a, is a really good spellcaster deck, and it's actually in um, Infinity Chasers, with a lot of reprints of cards like Arcanite Magician, um, the Spellbook spell cards themselves, and then just a whole bunch of support there. Other than that, um, yeah, we have combo pieces right over here to help with summoning uh, Endymion, the, the mighty magic master himself. Alright, so this is the short deck and what it looks like. I'm going to open it from the back. And I'm really much ready to go. So, these are the cards that are within the structure deck. And then there's like little back cards for um, Duel Wings. And then Legacy of the Duelist Link Evolution. Which I really don't care too much about Link Evolution. And Duel Links is Duel Links. Alright, so we have Magic. We have Endymia, the Mighty Master of Magic. We have Reflection of Endymion. We have Spell Power of Mastery. We have Dimmer, Dimmered Path. or Yeah, I think it's Dimmered Path. And then we have Daybreaker, the Shining Magical Warrior. Next are the commons in reprints. Okay, so we have Magister of Endymion. Servant of Endymion. Endymion, the, magical, the Master Magician. Crusader of Endymion, Defender of the Magical Knight, Magical Mystical Beast Cerberus, Mystical Beast Medusa, Magical Something, Magical Exemplar, uh, Magical Adductor, and Disenchanter, Apprentice Magician, Dark Magician of Chaos, Fairy Tale Luna, Summoner Monk, Spellbook Magician of Prophecy. Um, Magical Undertaker, Magician of Faith, Droll and Lockbird. Now for the spells, we have Endymion's Lap, Citadel of Endymion, Two Spell Power Grasp, 
one arcane barrier, spell book of secrets, spell book of power, and spell book of wisdom, magical blast, magician, uh, magical dimension, terraforming, left arm offering, and pot of desires. Next up is the spell, I mean the traps, and we have one ma mythical uh, beast demorph, uh, pitch black stone, power stone, extra buck, gaga -ga -ga shield, and magician circle. So I got a couple of cards already put to the side so we can talk about um, what's within the structure deck as its own pieces. So, um, Endymion, the magical master of magicians. I mean, magical mas the mighty master of magic. What Endymion does as a pendulum monster and as an effect monster is amazing. Um, you only some uh, once a turn when they spell count. I will. I'll read his monster effect, but pretty much this is Endymion himself. Um, Endymion, the magical. The Mighty Master of Magic, level 7, Dark Spellcaster type monster, pendulum scale of 8, uh, attack, attack 2800, defense 1700. So, this pendulum effect is every time you'll remove a whole bunch of spell counters, remove 6 spell counters from your side of the field to such summon this card from the pendulum zone. Uh, the number of cards on your field with spell counters on it, you can destroy up to the number of cards uh, in uh, your opponent. On, pretty much on the field. Then if you do, for every card that was destroyed, you place a spell counter on this card. But you can only use that effect of Endymion once per turn. Then Endymion's monster effect is each time a spell, trap, or monster... Yeah, each time a spell or trap is activated, or an effect is activated, you can negate that effect by removing uh, a spell counter from this card. No, returning a spell... A card on the field that can take a spell counter. And, um... Hold on one second. Okay, sorry about that. So, um, Endymion, yeah. So, his monster effect is pretty much, uh, you bounce a card on your side of the field that can take a spell counter that has a spell counter on it, return it to your hand, negate the activation of a spell, trap, or effect, and if you do destroy it. Then the number of spell counters that were on Endymion, you can add to Endymion himself, and he gains those spell counters. Which is great because it circulates spell counters. There's a lot of cards in this structure deck. There's just a lot of new cards, of course, that have um, that whole give spell counters and stuff to a monster. So you have a lot of range with this. It is a great spell. It's a really good uh, spellcaster type monster. And I have seen a few non spell counter pendulum decks use this. Um, I've seen some of the new fortune ladies use this. I've seen pendulum decks use it. I've seen updated pendulum decks that take the um, Endymion tactics to a new level. Because his effect, his other two effect monsters um, are amazing. And I'll go over them as well. No, other three. I'm sorry. So let's talk about Reflection of Endymion. So her effect is each time a spell, counters, a spell card is activated, she'll place a spell counter on herself. You can remove three spell counters from this card and she'll summon both this card and a, from your pinch and a monster in your hand that can take spell counters uh, and put them on the field. And if you do, you place a spell counter on each of them, which is amazing. Uh, her monster effect is that you can only self summon a copy of her once per turn, which is perfectly fine. When she self summon, you can target a card your opponent controls and one card you control with a spell counter, return those cards to hand. Then uh, place the same number of spell counters that was on the card you return to your hand uh, onto this card. And then when this card is destroyed by battle, you can add one Endymion card from your deck to your hand. So she searches for Endymion support. She uh, is a great... She summons herself to return stuff, and then she can return stuff um, on your side of the field and your opponent's side of the field. You mostly want to send her in defense because she has very hefty uh, defense. Her stats are light attribute level 7. Uh, pendulum scale of 2, 1850 attack, 27 defense. So those are pretty much two of the big hollows. We're going to talk about the spellcaster, the other spellcaster, and that is Daybreak, the Shining Magical Knight. So this is pretty much the pendulum monster for spellcasters. Or one of the many pendulum monsters, I mean link monsters for spellcasters. You see spellcaster monsters, when he's link summoned, you place a spell counter on him. He gains 300 attack for each spell counter that's attached to him. And then he can only use each of his effects uh, once per turn. 
and that is if a spellcaster type monster is also summoned uh, in a zone that this card points to, you place a spell counter on him. You can remove two spell counters from this card to target one card on the field and destroy it. 1600 attack link to points bottom left and bottom right. This is really good for spellcaster decks. Um, this is going to be good for a lot of spellcaster decks that want to use the extra deck as well. Um, it's nice to see spell counter monsters get a, a generic spellcaster. And I guess this makes up for Breaker the Magical Warrior not being in here. Because that was actually a shock that Breaker wasn't in here. And Breaker was one of the big cards that helped with the whole uh, spell counter art thing going around. So it's nice to see a Link monster variation of him. It does destroy multiple cards without having to destroy just spells and caps. And there's a ton of ways you can give this guy spell counters because a lot of the ways spell caster, the spell counter deck cards work. So it's nice to see. And any good course points generically as well. So that helps us um, tremendously. Uh, we're going to move on to two of the new cards from Endymion. And that is Endymion's Servant and Endymion's Magister. So Magister of Endymion and Servant of Endymion have really cool, unique effects. Um, each time a spell cast. Uh, of course, they have the effect of when a spell count, a spell card is activated and then resolved, they place a spell counter on themselves. Then they can remove uh, a number of spell counters, uh, spell counters uh, to start summoning themselves and a card from your hand that can place spell counters on it, uh, and then special summon themselves to the field. Um, that's like the good thing about these two is their um, their range is she's two, he's eight, he's earth, she's wind. Uh, so I guess you're going to really abuse the... Oh, and they have inverse attack and defense, too. She's 900 attack, 15 defense. He's 1,500 attack and 900 defense. Oh, that is adorable. They are literally made for each other. Um, and I do believe they hold the same setup for effects. Yeah. Uh, she can attack directly while she has spell cast. She has spell counter on her. Then once during your opponent's turn... Um, quick effect, she can discard a spell card, she can discard a card, there's a spell counter on each card you control, and that you can place spell counters on, and if this card in the monster zone is destroyed, you place her back into the pendulum zone, so she really much recycles herself, the master of Endymion does the same thing, um, and his quick effect is that he can, uh, remove two, three spell counters from his card, so summon a monster from your deck that can place spell cast, spell, place spell counters on it. Special so summon it to a monster zone on the field. And if this card in the monster zone um, is so you place it in uh, the spell and trap zone. And then he gains uh, the same amount of spell counters that was placed on him as a monster onto him. And she also shares that thing. I love both of their artwork. They're really beautiful artwork and I cannot believe they contradict oh well of course they contradict each other because reflection and and master of magic contradict each other wind earth and then dark and light and it's, it's, that is amazing so that is the magical m magician endymion stuff moving on from that crusader of endymion is a great reprint because uh 1900 gemini beater and helps with of course gemini beat for heroes um, 1900 beat for a lot of those decks. Gemini beat was an old school deck, and this card has not been printed, reprinted in so long, so it was a very needed reprint. Um, uh, Magical Abductor, she has been reprinted a few times, but she's a really good help for this deck in general because she gains spell counters for every time a spell card is activated. She can search your deck for a pendulum monster and add it to your hand. And as a monster, she's not too bad either, especially when she can summon a level 1 spellcaster and place it uh, from your deck to your hand. So she was really good help with a lot of the ways to get effect veilers to hand for pendulum decks if they needed it. And I believe there's a couple of other pendulum monsters that are like level 1 and stuff that were spellcaster, and she helped get to them as well. She has some really good stats on her too. Uh, magical, I mean, Apprentice Magician, old school OG spellcaster uh, support card. For your low-level spellcasters, um, she had a lot of synergy back then because a uh, perfect circle, um, tribute monarchs, and stuff like that, and her ability to give a spell counter to a card as well. Of course, the biggest magician, dark magician, dark magician of chaos, one of Yugi's old-school monsters. Uh, got to see him get reprinted because he does have his errata, so he's not abusable. 
like he used to be. Um, 1800 B stick, 2800 attacker that can easily get rid of a lot of threats by banishing them instead of sending them to graveyard. And during the end phase, of course, you can add that spell card to your hand. Um, I want to talk about the spellbook spell card. So actually, let me put in the magician. Uh, let me put the spellcaster, the spellbook magician of prophecy there, and of course the three spellbooks that we got in the structure deck. So we got spellbook of secrets, spellbook of power, and spellbook of wisdom. Uh, really good cards for the pretty much the starting lineup for any of your spellbook decks. Um, nice to see them re nice to see them printed in common form, especially the spellbook secrets in the spellbook magician of prophecy. What is really amazing about this is that spellbooks are a really good monster archetype prophecy spellbooks. Um, they're really good generic support for any spellcaster deck, and it just helps them out tremendously. The one card that isn't here that you do need to pick up if you want to play like a spellbook engine in any spellcaster deck is the uh the, the draw card that the spellbook uh pa I say power uh, I forget what the, the the name of the card is but it's I know it's a spellbook of and what it does is it sends spellbook spellbook law book I think that's what it is you send a spellcaster type monster to your graveyard to draw two cards it's gonna work really well with Fortune Lady Light when the new spellcaster stuff comes out um. Because it helps their out tremendously. Of course, when the new Fortune Lady support comes out. Because it's a ton of draw power. ton of search power. ton of just spellcaster reliability. So I'm glad to see these guys get printed all together. Um, some more reprints we can talk about. Because uh, I want to save the bigger reprints for last. Um, as we all know. Endymion's Lab and Citadel of Endymion. Or Endymion. So, because um, I, I pronounced that just the way it is. Thanks, Sailor Moon. Um, so, in Demion's Lab, or in Demion's Lab, uh, you pretty much this card's name is treated as Citadel of Demion. While this card is in the spell and trap zone, each time a spell card is activated, you place a counter on it after it resolves. Uh, once a turn after damage calculation, if uh, your spellcaster monster is destroyed by battle, you can remove six counters from this card and just a level 7 or higher spellcaster monster from your hand or deck. You only use, uh... You activate one in Demion's lab per turn. So this pretty much just speeds up the process to get the big guy onto the board, get Reflection, um, or you can hit Dark Magician of Chaos and put him in play and get him going. Like, there's a lot of really good setup with Spellcaster cards. I don't know why it's treated as Citadel of Endymion, because um, it doesn't share the same effects as, as Citadel. So this is Citadel of Endymion. I think it does work with um, the other Magician that... Uh, the, the regular effect monster uh, in Demian, because I think it'll help with his effects as well, because it needs to, he needs Citadel, if I'm not saying. Actually, let's take a look at um, in Demian, the Magical Master. Do you need it? No, he does not. Okay, so, moving on to Citadel and Demian. This is pretty much a, one of the old school uh, spellcaster cards, and it really does focus, of course, on um, every time a spell card is activated, it plays a counter on it. It can be destroyed. If it would to be, if it would be destroyed, you remove a spell counter from it. And then, um, if a spell a card that uses spell cast counters needs spell counters, you take it off of set it, You take as many as you need off of Endymion, off of Citadel, and you give it to that card to help it complete its effects. You probably notice through the effects of. Um, what are those cards? Oh, Royal Magical Library, and its effect to go crazy off of draw power. Um, just a lot of crazy things with this card, with it, Citadel of itself. Two Spell Power Grasp, which pretty much puts a spell counter on a card that ha can hold a spell counter. And you search your deck for a copy of it and add it to your hand. Um, of course, a lot of people remember that card because it's in Dual Links and you use it with the Mystical Beast Cerberus deck before that got crazy. And then got hit because the... Um, effect got hit. Then we have spell, pow spell Power Mastery. This works with uh, Spell Power Grass for each one. It plays it at, uh, you can add an Endymion card from your deck to your hand. Then you count the number of Spell Power and Mastery and Spell Power Grass you control or have in your graveyard. It plays that many of spell, cast spell ca Counter cards among those cards onto the cards you control that can have Spell cast Counters placed on them. Which is amazing because it helps you put a lot of stuff onto them. And then we have uh, dimmered path 
which you target a spellcaster effect, monster in your graveyard, and you add it to your hand. So it's pretty much their um, warrior returning life, but for spellcasters. Spellcaster effect monsters, to be precise. All right, and now with a little bit of time we have left, I want to talk about all the hot reprints that a lot of people are going to be looking for competitive wise. Droll and Lockbird as a common. So, this was something a lot of people were waiting for. And the TCG never really thought we were going to get this because we thought um, the OCG was going to, the TCG print was going to screw us over and probably put in, uh, what, Effect Valor and stuff like that. But they did not. They owned up to it and gave us Droll and Lockbird. So, if you're looking for copies of Droll and Lockbird, snag you about three structure decks and trust me you'll get them uh next is left arm offering i believe if you have two or more other cards in your hand you can manage your entire hand add one spell card from your deck to your hand you can not set spells or traps during the turn you activate this card so it's pretty much a one shot one all to get a spell card and hope and pray that that spell card helps you tremendously because I personally wouldn't use this, but I know there's a lot of decks that could benefit from it. And being told you cannot set anything for the rest of the turn is perfectly fine for most decks. But for me, I'm just like, no, I got to have one. So, yeah, that is Left Star Offering. And, of course, the next biggest reprint in this is Pot of Desires, going from Ultra to Common. I mean, from Secret to Ultra to Common. And I have two sets of these, so I'm probably going to get rid of the second set. But what this card does, of course, if most people don't know it, is uh, banish the top 10 cards of your deck face down and draw two cards. You only activate one pot of desires per turn. Uh, so this is pretty much just a easy way for most decks that can abuse banishing cards. Like, it's a very situational draw card for a lot of players. For me, personally, I would not use this in a deck in most of the decks I run. Um, if I did fit this into a deck, I'd have to run, like, literally multiple copies of cards and not one card that I had, like, one or two. So, that is pretty much it for this, you guys. And that's pretty much my look and take on, uh, my look at or the order of spellcasters. As a full deck itself, I think it has a lot of potential. Uh, has a lot of potential as a pendulum deck. Has a lot of great reprints to keep it going. And a lot of great reprints that you can fit into a lot of other decks. I think a lot of people are going to be very excited to pick these up. So if you have not, please do as soon as possible. Because Joel and Lockbird, Left Arm Offering, uh, Spellbook Magician, and uh, Spellbook Spells, Pot of Desires is a must grab. And really good support with uh, Endymia, the Mighty Master of Magic. So, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoy um, this Structure Deck opening. And hopefully some more come out when Structure Decks come out soon. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Hit that notification bell when you guys want to be informed when I update, when we upload new videos, and go live. So, thank you guys so much for watching. HPJ, signing out. Take care.